United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this time, we'll take a moment of silence to use as you wish. This time we will take communications from the patrons. Patrons? <laughs> Welcome. Please uh, state your name and <laughs> for the record. Suzanne Umbach. I'm a member of the Artist Town Council. We are looking into a marketing program for the community. I don't have details at this point. But with the school being such an integral part of our community, it just made sense to perhaps partner with you and work together on this project. I have connected with Recon Media in Plymouth. Like I say, I don't have the details yet, but they will be getting back to us. So I just wanted to inform you of that and perhaps be on a future agenda for, with more details if you're interested. Yeah, Suzanne and I talked this afternoon and I suggested that she let us know this is happening and or we can certainly put it on a future agenda. The superintendent, I would love to see. We are a partnership in promoting a community and our school and town walk hand to hand with this. So when you get more information, let us know and we can put it on the agenda and go from there then. Okay. I would do that. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Anyone else? No one else. Uh, we will move to the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting, March 19th, 2018. Your motion. I move we approve the minutes from uh, the March 19th meeting. Motion for Brett. In a second. Second. Jenny. Second. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. Call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Vote pass. Four, zero. Thank you, Brett. Uh, we'll have uh, approval of personnel changes. Looks like we have employment, groundskeeper, study hall, foreign language teacher for 2018-19 bus driver, and a dishwasher sprayer. If I could, I'd like to speak a little bit about our foreign language new teacher that we'd like to recommend. And it's Heather Harder, and Heather's here with Mr. Medich. Welcome, <laughs> Heather. A uh, little bit about Heather. Um, she's got a master's degree in French and Spanish, uh, 18 years teaching experience, teaching in Buchanan, Michigan at the present time, living in South Bend has taught in several districts in Indiana around the Angola area, born and raised in that area. And her dad was a coach, and principal, and so she's sort of lived in schools her whole life, I think, right, Heather? Yes. <laughs> but a couple things that are really important, bringing Heather and recommending her for employment. Uh, with, her, with a master's degree, she's highly qualified. The master's degree really helps us with highly qualified teachers. Uh, also, the dual licensing in French and Spanish allows us the opportunity in the future to extend our curriculum. And she's also taught dual credit courses in, with Ivy Tech and other, which are things we have not had before. So she brings a wealth of experience to our school district and with our new contract board where we put in the highly qualified and high needs areas where we can uh, offer employment. Um, we're able to get a highly qualified applicant like Heather. So I would like to welcome her and highly recommend her for employment. And Heather, I don't want to enter 
embarrass you, but if you want to say anything, you're welcome to do so. We told you you didn't have to, but we wanted to make sure no, the board knew you were here. I'm really excited to be here and excited to get started, and so far everybody's been really nice. And we'll be happy to have you. Board. Can you repeat that in French, please? Oui, je suis très heureuse d'être ici. And now in Spanish, <laughs> 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 I said she'd have to explain to me later what she said, because <laughs> she did. Welcome. That's all I have in personnel, but we certainly recommend approval. I will entertain a motion for the employment. So moved. I'll second. Kurt and Brett. Any discussion? I'll just comment, Heather, thank you for taking the time to come down. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> to come to Argus, but it, but it is nice. <coughs> we welcome you, and, and uh, I think Ned and Nick probably were all excited to have you come, so it's nice to get those emails about them excited, and they think they have a good person, and then get them, so that's very nice, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Call for the vote, and all those in favor of the employment, Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any opposed? Remains. Pass is 4 0. Can't hear Kirk down there, so I have to ask. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> I don't usually get used of not being allowed up there. But well, I know. But. Um, the approval of the 2018 19 student handbook. Well, if there's questions, board, uh, Kelly's here to uh, answer any questions you may have. But the, we've gone through the handbooks. They received the edits that need to be to keep up with the Indiana code and with current information. And we would recommend approval of the handbooks. But if you have any questions or any comments, uh, Kelly's here to try and answer those questions. Mr. Betty just pointed to Kelly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying Kelly. <laughs> uh, Nick, can you point out any policy, real policy changes? not just, uh, you know, language or dates or? Um, most of it is just the language um, and trying to clarify some things. Um, there, of course, there are changes always to the curriculum that the state recommends. Um, that list I can't name off the top of my head. Right. But um, other than that, there isn't too much dealing with programs or things we're doing. It's just kind of changing the language so we can clarify some things and make things smoother for us. Yeah. Correct. I, I did see where we revised, and this is probably more of a dead question, I don't think you can answer it, Nick, the elementary grading scale. Yes. It's kind of always been a little bit of a point of contention how they differed, and, but there was a lot of a lot of ongoing back and forth about why they differed in the past. So now we've, we're matching them up. We've had we've had discussion about that. It makes sense uh, that we should have similar scales, K to 12. And so we've made some real strides in this area, and we worked with the elementary staff to do that. And so we are uh, recommending that. And it, it really needed to be taken care of. So yes, we made some big strides there this year. And Mr. Maddich. Mr. Jones, I, I misspoke. The graduation requirements, um, we did add an early graduation process um, for students who might want to graduate before um, the scheduled time. Uh, we set up a process that, from some paperwork that's needed, some request forms that need to be filled out, and a plan of action on how they're going to complete that. So. What was the impetus for that? Uh, the state of Indiana is part of a requiring us to have that. And okay. Severe needs for kids, and it can be social need or it can be a financial need or it can be a military situation and, 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 you know, hardship so we just had to have some language on those things but there's a process you apply and go through and list it out the handbook in alliance with the uh, new Indiana code on that. and we had some students this year that financially um, parents left them on their own they were turning 18 they had to get a job in order to have somewhere to live we create a process and do some paperwork to figure out how to do that. Getting that degree done. They can still graduate. Basically homeless. 
at times. Well, I know there was some, I mean, it's certainly possible, if, especially if you're foregoing study halls and, and that stuff, that you can certainly get your credits accumulated uh, far in advance of what your regular scheduled graduation date would be. And some kids are getting early amendments into universities and colleges, and none of that is inappropriate, but there's a process to go through is it appropriate. All right, that's right. Correct. So that's why it's outlining it, having some language on that. I move the 2018-2019 student handbook um, be approved as presented. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye Doug. <laughs> <coughs> Down here. <laughs> Passage 4-0. Let's go back here on that side. Yeah. <laughs> um, item 7, approval of technology devices for the 2018 through 2022 uh, school year. Board, our lease on student technology devices <coughs> uh, is completed this year and we would need a new look at a new four-year lease and last time I gave you some very initial information and uh, Patty's loading up some information here I can share and hand you a hard copy of what I'm putting out there so basically what we shared last time but we have an option too that we can consider if you want to see also but as we took quotes on this from different companies um, you see up in the board there and or in your document we had two quotes from Chromebook and that met our first of all they had to meet our specifications and so we had uh, two HP quotes and an ASUS quote um, 21050 178 dollars for the other one and the ASUS Chromebook 23350 <laughs> we would recommend of those three the HP Chromebook 11 G5 uh, for 178 which is the lowest cost but it meets all our specifications and actually it's a newer machine that actually has more and more to price so I don't know how they think they're going to sell the older machines but anyways not our problem and then with Apple on the iPads there is no negotiation with Apple there is one school price to everybody and that's it that's just the way Apple conducts business but we have received notification that Apple is going to come out with new educational pricing at the end of this month. And if it is, they'll guarantee us it will be lower. So it will not be higher. That would be a maximum number. And the other recommendation we got from our teacher committee and our administrators and end-to-end -end really thinks this is important. If we're going to do one-to-one -one and continue to do that and really integrate it into this instruction, we need to get our teachers up and going at a higher level on this and uh, we recommend MacBook Airs this is coming from end to end uh, for our teachers and the quote on those are $796 the caveat to this is we're going to have training this summer on using uh, devices for students and teachers in the classroom for instruction to get your MacBook Air you have to attend the training uh, we will not issue it to a teacher if you so approve will not issue it to they take their training and get trained how to use it for instruction in the classroom which is a pretty good deal they get a MacBook Air to use but they have to take the training so they can integrate it into their instruction is what we will do there um, we talked about the Apple Crossing that's our protection and uh, we, there's a question or two brought up about that that's $115 one thing I didn't mention last time that also includes our cases You've got to have cases so if we don't do the Apple Cross, Apple Crossing protection, there's still a cost there. It would be the cost of the cases, and that would be a case every two years. And I could give you that in a little bit. What the, the case is about $35. And so that would be a $70 cost there. So it goes from $115 to $70. But just so you get it, it is a reduction, but not that whole cost there. you got to have the licensing, and got to have for the Chromebooks, and the licensing for the MacBooks, and there's the cost per device so if you head down a little lower on this page our recommendation be for 490 
Chromebooks, that would be grades four through high school. And then you'd have the licensing, so 178 and the $25 you see the cost, and the, the uh, Chromebook management. And then if you look in the next page, what we'd need for iPads, uh, 140 for the primary, and the Zulu desk, and the, and, and the coverage on those. So that would be our recommendation for technology. Now, I did figure it what the cost would be for option two and to drop the protection. And I can show that to you, board, what that would change the cost and what that would, all this affects what our book fees are and different things down the line here. But here would be option two. Without that, I am recommending option one because if we go with option two, we've got to hire somebody to repair these and we have to bill parents. And uh, my office staff knows how much, how that works, billing parents and trying to collect this money. <laughs> what happens in a lot of these cases when the device is broken, we bill them, we can't collect the money, it ends up going to small claims court and we get half of it, if we're lucky. And the courts get the rest of it and we still don't collect it all, do we, Jennifer? Or we're gonna have to hire an extra employee and teach them how to repair them. And none of that equals the amount of money of this protection. So that's why we're going that way. I also understood your question last time. I'm not usually for the warranties and that, but in this case, it seems to make financial sense and roll it into our lease that we would pay every year. And I can show you the difference in the lease. Our payment per year for these, and it would be paid out of textbook rental, it would be uh, 56,000 with the, with it, and about 40, 53,000. I mean, 53,000 without the protection, 56,000 and change with the protection, and. Uh, so it's not a great difference. It would save us three, four thousand dollars a year, but it doesn't equal up to an employee or a repair. So, any questions? But this would be our recommendation. I'll try to answer that more in detail. I think we have part of option one and part of option two up there on, on screen. No, this is the back of option one. Okay, thank you. I can pull up option two if you'd like. Um, We've got it. I don't need option. I'm sorry. I, I understand. I, I guess take, since I've never had experiences, take me through a student who has a problem with their device. Well, what happens if they have a problem with their device and it was natural? Like they drop it. Okay. If it's intentional, let's say they threw it at their brother or sister or across the room or something like that. The repair gets billed back to the parent. Okay. And when you figure like half of our students are on free lunch, they have free textbooks, they didn't pay for it the first thing, state of Indiana did, now trying to collect for something. And it's just a constant battle. Um, Jennifer, Patty, uh, you deal with this a lot more than I deal trying to get this money going through small claims court. If it's just wear and tear on the device and they didn't accidentally do it, we pay for it anyways. And then that's coming out of a place that's not funded which coming out of our capital projects fund or whatever. And this way we would have it funded through our lease and it wouldn't be pulling from other budgets. And the anger that comes from parents because they say, well, it was, it was an accident, it wasn't intentional. We're trying to decide whether it's intentional or accidental. We get in some real tough situations there, how to decide that. Uh, so I'm sorry, it's, this time they've been on the hook for the payment. Right? Yes. So I guess I'm a little concerned about the interest in taking care of your book if every time it gets well it this is accidentally uh, broken I don't know if, I just think I'm asking just I don't know if there's no I think it's a fair thing and we talked about uh, we could do something and you could do this board like hey if you're just abusing the device and this is for um, two repairs you're beyond that you're going to get billed for it. and we could even charge a partial amount of money if it's a intentional Thing. Uh, we could charge. So there's a lot of things we could do in that, but we need some type of protection on these devices because of our huge investment in them. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying, too. We have not seen. Haven't seen them. Well, of course, they've been on the hook. Yeah, but they've been on the hook. But yeah. 
uh, and a lot of fighting among families when they're split families and that who pays and who doesn't yeah. pay. We get caught in the middle of that and whenever we're taking parents to court for a bill, that, that develops a working educational relationship makes it pretty strained as we're trying to work through that. Okay. You deal with it. You deal with it. You deal with it as we go through it. It's a, it's a tough situation. So my, op my recommendation would be option one and if you so choose to do that then and we get to our textbook rental and other things uh, that all sort of works through and our lease and all that. So if not, if you want to look at option two, that sort of works through too. Bottom line on textbook rental, this protection, depending on what grade level, is five to ten dollars a year on textbook rental. Okay. That's a pretty good deal, I think, for parents not to have that eighty to a hundred dollar bill come through the window. All right. No. Um, the next thing I need a little help because I don't in the recommendation which I assume we're going to be asked to approve I don't see the seven hundred and ninety six dollar Mac book air it's on page two it is yeah MacBook Air. seven ninety six seven hundred and ninety six dollars an option one right there and yeah there's some typos on this yes if you're looking at, at Option one, I think this is where Brett's question is coming. Like, for instance, if you look down here at the bottom, it says the four year max for coverage with protected case for Chromebooks, it's showing 70 apiece. Actually, the 115 was the amount shown at the top. You're right. And if you take the 115 and extrapolate, then it truly is 56,350. So, on the left hand column, that 70 is a typographical yes, error. That is correct. And then you've got the same situation then with your iPads, I believe, at the bottom where the, I believe this, the extrapolation itself is correct. The it 40, is. 41 of 20, is that the one you're looking at? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. Well, 41, I guess that's the other question. Well, you're saying the iPad Wi-Fi, see that, that got, so you're saying you're, you're actually, you're not recommending the MacBook, you're recommending the wife, the iPad? The iPad. The MacBooks are not in the lease. They are a teacher tool. So and that's a whole different That's item. a whole different. So this it's is. It's not in the lease. That's why you don't see it down below. It's a separate gotcha. item. I got that's it. a separate item, the MacBook. So the iPad is that's why you don't see the it lower primary grade. K to 2. Yeah. iPad K to 2, Chromebook 3 through 12. Okay. The MacBook Airs are for teachers, and that's not taken out of the student. Right. That's, Please, that's why you're not picking cost. that up. That's a right. corporation cost, and I'll explain how we're paying okay. that separately. That is correct. Thank you for helping me. Explain. Okay, and then the only other small thing is the top of page two, it's 293. On the other page, it's 294. I'm sorry, it appears it's the 293 number that's, I think, being used in the 41020. It's just a buck, but. It's a round off because it's that change. Yeah. So I mean, the extrapolation is based on the 293 figure. Oh, yes. 293. Got yeah. it. So done. It's yeah. And while we have, we have different quotes coming from these companies, and that's why it's picked up. Sorry about that. But um, if you approve that, then I can I I have the lease information from you and what the total amount is that we go to next. Okay. So then on the MacBook, since they're not. I mean, it, it's part of this, the, the whole uh, decision-making process. Then is there a, an independent lease on the MacBooks that are going to be utilized for staff? Or are those just flat-out purchase? We will purchase those. Okay. And we have two choices where to purchase. We could go through our bond money or our capital projects. We have the funding in either location. Okay. So we'll, we'll cash those out. We don't need a lease on those. All right. Because they're a teacher tool. Is there a time frame expectation on the longevity of the MacBooks? For At the least, staff? For, yeah, they'll, they'll last eight to ten years, we're being told. A lot longer than our student devices. Now, technology may eight change. Eight to ten longer. years on a, on a <laughs> laptop? They, okay. they say they'll be working that long. So we're planning on four years Although, right now. Okay. But yeah, no, that's technology that's will right. change enough. But we'll get at least four years out of it. It will also free up some other computers we now have, hardwired computers, that we can use in other areas too. So that it's a win-win in quite a few areas there. Plus, 
our employees can take their work home with them a lot easier. Well, that's good news. <laughs> Some will think so. One was left. All right, well, uh, I guess you're looking for a recommendation. Yes, um, because August will be here quickly. We have to have these up and ready to go. We or a motion, speak. rather. You're looking for a motion. I'm looking for a motion. For My recommendation is option one. Yep. Yeah. I move that we proceed with option one as recommended by Mr. Spiker. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for option one on the computers for the 2018-19 school year. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. It's sort of a corollary to that one here. Four zero. Doug. Here would be what we got the quotes we have on a lease for option one. The total amount that would be and how it would be funded. And then this goes along with the number nine then later on in the agenda. But this would be the buyout after four years would be a dollar. The uh, interest rate would be 4.03 and our payment would be $56,597.38 at these prices. And this would take care of all the iPads and Chromebooks, all the student devices and their licensing. And we'd pay this out of uh, textbook rental and state re reimbursement for textbook rental. And the textbook rental rates we're going to recommend would pay for this. I don't know if we need a separate approval on that at this time, but is the buyout do. guaranteed then within the lease contract itself? Yes. Because I seem to recall that the buyout amounts that were communicated at the beginning of the lease for the current Chromebooks that we used throughout the corporation is not the same figure that's being uh, communicated. Well, our buyout is one dollar. There are for one dollar. And they don't want the one dollar. That'll be the same. But now they have value and we own them. Right. And so that's what I'm coming on the next. Well, I, I just don't want to make, I just don't want there to be any question on the tail end as far and, as and, the and buyout. We, yeah, and I agree. And we've made that very precise that we own them afterwards for so whatever residual value they have. And we can sell them to our patrons or our students, or we can use them or whatever we decide to do with them. Okay, we will move on to a, agenda item number eight, approval of the 2018-19 textbook fees. Lord, I have a hard copy of that here if you want another hard copy of it, but option one, textbook rental fees. And that was in your packet, but here's a hard copy we'll ask you to consider. <coughs> Be. So approved. Uh, grades K to two would be for, for the uh, device rental and all our other materials and that would be $180. Grades three to six, everything textbook rental would be $195. Grades seven and eight would be $195. Listing what would go with that. Grades nine to 12 would be $220 with a little caveat down there. There are specific fees for college credit and AP courses over and above that. So um, that would be our recommendation for textbook rental. Uh, it is an increase, but it's an increase of about $5 a year for the last four years where they have not increased. So, and then this would freeze them for another four years. So I think it's very doable. And the fact that we're now covering repairs pretty good deal for parents. I know it's costly, but anyone that makes an effort to pay, we give them all year long to pay for it. You just work with us, we'll work with you. Um, I think 
things doable, and almost exactly half of our students get free textbook from the state of Indiana. So it's more rapid. So in reality, they're up about twenty dollars. Reality, about twenty bucks from where they were. Varies a little, varies a little bit of what grade level the kids are at, but about an average of that. High school picked up a little more because um, some materials and fees, but elementary and middle school twenty bucks. And then that will, we anticipate these staying the same for the time of the lease. So we'd recommend these textbook rental rates so we can start setting things in motion for 2018. Um move that we approve the uh, textbook rental for next year as presented. I'll second. Penny, I'll second. Can you with the second? Any further discussion? Uh, I will say, you know, it, it's it's never a good thing to have to increase our fees uh, to our, our users, which of course are our students and our families, but uh, it's necessary in certain cases. And I think it is nice that you have consistency not only from year to year but also from grade level to grade level uh, that was one of the really annoying things uh, as a parent when my kids were younger was you would see this wild fluctuation from one year to the next and i didn't ever feel like i got a very good explanation for that fluctuation so i, I think that hopefully this will be a, a nice Thing for our families to know how much to budget and what to expect when it comes time for the loan. Anyone else? Um, all those in favor of the approval of 2018-19 book fees, signify the pay aye. Aye. Passes four zero. Uh, item nine: approval for sale of used. Student Chromebooks after the 2017-18 school year for the sum of $40. We worked with end to end and uh, we worked with Chromebook manufacturers. What are these Chromebooks worth at this time? And in, if you go to like a um, retail store, they're probably worth about 60 bucks. Wholesale, 40 to 45 dollars. Um, overseas, about 30 bucks. So. Asking end to end, who said a lot of districts, they say in a fair price to offer it to our students and parents at the end of the year if they want to purchase their Chromebook would be $40. So, what would happen if they decided they want to buy the Chromebook? They can buy it at the end of school. We would give them instructions how to wipe all our filters off of it. And once it goes out the door, there's no warranty, no nothing. It worked when it went out the door. Buyer beware, buyer risk. Now, if they don't want their Chromebook, they want somebody else's because they have used it, they will get potluck off the stack. But if they really took care of their Chromebook, the student, they get the first choice. They get their Chromebook. And there's value for taking care of it right there. The student, they can buy it for, for you. I've heard some students, well, I've really taken care of this. I'd really like to have mine because I know it's in great shape. Yet. Fine, you get yours. Uh, if you've abused yours, you're going to get one off the stack. We're going to keep the best ones that are not purchased outright by the student because we're going to keep them for backups. But if somebody wants to buy one at risk off the shelf, and that'll be fine. But $40, and uh, no, we're not uh, leasing them or financing them. It's $40 cash, and you take it and go. So I think that's fair, and I know we have some people interested, but so we'd ask approval of you setting that price on those. And that money will go back into textbook rental to help fund our new lease as we sell the used machines. I have a motion. I move we approve the sale of used student Chromebooks for $40 each. Second. Motion and a second by Jeannie. Any discussion? Yeah, I guess that Ned? Yeah. Or Ed. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ed. Um, it will just be the student, or if we don't get enough sales, are we going to try no, to No, other push people can buy. Up? So, yes, other adults or community members would like to buy. Um, you want to sell them, right? Yes, Most we, we want to sell. We're going to try to keep 50 to 
yeah. 75 of them for spares if kids kid breaks his device and they're abusing their device um, here's what you're going to use because <laughs> you can't take care of them good but any community member would like to buy it this $40 they can have they can purchase after the kids get a chance to buy it okay. but our kids get first priority right. and their families to the ones they have if they want them. If they don't want them that's fine uh, my memory is not always perfect Ned mm -hmm. but um, I've been part of this whatever this is for a while now I seem to recall at the at the outset of the leases on these devices that there was communication to uh, the public as far as what the lease and purchase amounts were going to be so I would feel a lot better if we could go back through and make sure that 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 we did not communicate a value that was different from the $40 yeah. before we proceeded. I can certainly look. I'm not aware of that. I've asked several different people, but we can certainly check on that. Uh, I know my office staff, we don't remember that. We know they're, they're, they're ours at the end of the year, but I don't know what we communicate. But I, I'll be happy to look back at it if you want to. Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer that we go through the minutes to make sure that uh, something different wasn't communicated. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, if, you know, if, if we said 100 and we come back with 40, I don't think yeah. anybody's going to be. Uh, no, but if we said 20 and we come up with 40, you might get a question. Well, I just, I, I prefer to be safe rather than that, accused of being dishonest. Yeah, no, don't want that at all. We'd be, I'm not aware of it, but we'd be happy to check it out if you want us to. So we, I, I don't we need want some to, help, then we don't want to approve this. So yeah, so what I would say, I'm going to ask a little later on for a special session next week. Uh, we could postpone it a week. I don't want to postpone to May because we need to notify people what's happening. But uh, Or if you want to phrase it in some way to make sure that... Yeah, can't we just revise the motion to approve uh, subject to not finding out contradictory information? Yeah. Yeah. However you want to do it. I just want to keep it moving so we can notify our kids of parents that this is coming at the end of the year because it's coming quickly so however you choose to do it board but we'll come at, back at it pretty quickly if you table it and if you want to say just to make sure that uh, we didn't tell them we were going to sell them for less yeah. Jenny's approach would probably be valid and just yeah. conditional you can you can amend your own motion all right we get you the information then. um time out so, So I'll amend my motion to um, approve the sale of the student Chromebooks for a value not to exceed the $40. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah. Nope. No, because I'm doing that. Not to exceed the $40, I guess that's fine. A value of not more than 40 unless the previous number was Lower. lower than 40. Well, Whichever is the lower of the two. Yeah. But that's, the way. that's the way I understood what you said. If that's what you were trying to say. I meant to say 40 or less. There you go. Done. Done. Uh, I've amended the motion by that. Brett. Yeah, because you're in no one. <laughs> seconded by Jenny. Re yeah, Jenny, repeat what I said, would you? <laughs> he said approval of a student Chromebook for an amount of um, not to exceed $40. Okay. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, 40 euros. BS. You still second? Yep. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Man, we don't have money. It just falls apart up here. <laughs> <laughs> Motion passed. That was trying to be difficult. I'd say it went pretty good right there. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Uh, agenda number, item number 10, approval of transferred students for the 2018-19 school year. You yes. know, I'll hand that one over to Ned. Well, the state of Indiana now requires that each corporation act on transfers 
and by action each school year, when you'll accept transfers, when you won't, and you have to put dates to it. Um, so obviously we accept transfers and we want to continue to accept transfers though. So um, for the 18-19 school years, I would recommend that we accept transfers from June 1, which is really when we open the books for the new school year and start thinking about the new school year. Other people, they can talk to us ahead of time and get all set up and that, but the official would be June 1. And then we would go through September 1, and the idea that we would sort of close it for the year then, you have uh, the state count day where we receive money. If they come in after the uh, third Friday in September, we educate them for nothing. And the other school district collected on them. So it seemed to make sense to try to encourage everyone, get your students here, your transfer students, we want you, we want you for the start of school. But we got to give the state guidelines on this and report it to the state what the board said. So I, I would say we'd accept transfer tuitions. It's not that we don't want them, but um, a lot of times through the school year, and Mr. Medich can help me with this as he's sitting there, when we get students through the school year after count day, it's they've been disciplined by another school district, uh, they've been suspended or expelled, and they're running from that and trying to get put us in a tough situation. And we usually want to enforce the discipline of the other school district, which is really tough for us to do. But, and we don't get paid for it, we educate them for free for that year. Now the next year we can pick it up. So, Mr. Medich, I know you run into this. Anything you'd like to add on kids you get through the year after the count day? Interesting uh, circumstances for most of them. It's never just a clean move because we moved to town for a job. If they move, we'll always take them, of it's, course. We do have that, but it's not that common. And with the second year count not making a difference in pay, it really is. That's the reason we had recommended a change. You had multiple counts and they all get paid, so picked it up through the year. But starting next year, only the one count is for payment, and that's in September. So, board, you can do as you wish. Right now, we're open all year long, and we can report it that way, but it would seem to make sense to try to pick up that money, so we pick up the finances for Argus schools for our transfer kids. All they need to do is be here by September 1, and we'll be glad to educate them. Ned, I seem to remember years prior that we hadn't set a capacity yes, for they, by grade level. They, I thought I saw something recently from a neighboring school corporation that was in the paper yes is that part of this as well it's optional whether well, school district wants to set a capacity now or not it used to be mandatory so it's no longer mandatory it's no longer mandatory and really in our situation i don't see any situation where i'm worried about capacity right now okay. so but that's a good question because it used to be that's correct and you can still set that if the board chooses but um Right now, I don't see this uh, taking any advantages away or any educational situations harming our students with the transfers. I guess help me out with this for a second. That we would not accept a student after these dates? We would if they move in, but just tra as a transfer, we would not until the next school. We would accept them, but not to the next school. Year, if you did this. Now, if you want to keep it open all year, you can, but there's a that we would not get funded for. It. That's the point. And that's a change. Well, in the recent history of the corporation, um, Nick can speak to this. I think really during the next tenure here, we've always trended for having several more kids here in the spring than we had in the fall. And for many years, when there were only single counts, of course, that was you know, additional resources that our corporation was expending without recompense from the state. Correct. And now that we're going back to the dual counts, the second count really for, for funding purposes means nothing, then we're kind of back to the same situation as we were before. The funding model has changed again. Right. From where we were, and that, that's what we're trying to address. So we receive funding. The funding should follow the child. We're going to educate them. We should receive the funding, and we want the funding. We want the child. We want the funding because we don't think the community should actually fund that child for a year when the funding went to another school district. 
So, so what's the second count even accomplishing anymore? It's just a count to see if you're increasing or not. I mean, it doesn't accomplish anything. It doesn't count for funding at all. It really was a mistake by the General Assembly. They removed the funding, but then removed the count. So we still have to count, but there's no purpose for it. Our question was allowed. Is there, how much do you guys get per student? They're really not allowed, but I will answer. It varies with every kid, depending on their disability, whether they're in this category or this category. If you want to throw out a round number, six thousand dollars. So I guess that I'm trying to think this through. It concerns me a little bit, and I know Nick, that this is the exception. But if I've got a student in a neighboring school system that has a choice between two and once out of the one then they're in for some reason, and they're a good student. I'm a little concerned that now we force them to choose someone besides us for future years based on not getting funded this year. And when I think about, I, you guys can help me with more costs, but no more costs for the teacher. And so, you know, there's certain costs that are fixed in this school. Right. So I'm a little, little le leery of this in that there's a plus. I just know there'll be a family of ten want to move in as soon as I can. <laughs> We'd be glad to have them. And, and they're, uh, you know, they, they're going to build a factory here. So the thing. <laughs> so there, anyway, there's that's, a plus and minus. You could pick up that, but you could pick up three expelled kids from another district that are nothing but issues. And I'm sorry, are you? Then are you required to take them? You can't cherry pick. If I could cherry pick, I'd be all. Oh. Them. Okay. They they eliminated the cherry picking law about five all right. years ago. Okay, then I'm good. Because. Because once it's open, them. it's open for everybody. Okay. And from your severe handicap to kids that are real discipline problems. And, All right. And I'm usually, done. and say very nicely, but usually that's the type you you get the quality transfers during the summers. Okay. And the school starts. Well, that would be. And I don't want to the point here, but you know, it, I don't think we should make the decision lightly and, and short sighted as far as what we're going to do with this and whether we are going to have a hard cutoff. I mean, but recent trends are such that this corporation has suffered financially from an influx of students after the count date. We have. And that does tax resources. And although staff and support staff are fixed costs, then you are asking them to do more for the same amount and not perhaps provide as good a service to the students who already have if you know if they're uh, stretched then I have watched this so far this in school the year it's we're talking less than five kids and quality kids less than five, well, less than five. <laughs> <laughs> productive all right students I'm done and the decision's only for one year, right? So oh, you should change. we get into this and you decide? Can, you could change it. Can we amend it, it in October you if you want to? You could amend it September 1 and extend it if you wanted to. So if we had some A crazy family situation come up. Family could change I'm saying stuff. if we had some crazy yeah. situation come up. If we see something. Yeah, you can amend. We just need to put something to the state and something on our website. Right. Transfers, we're taking you. We're, we're open for business. Okay. I move that we approve our transfer student policy for 2018-2019, open from June 1 through September 1. And I'll second it. Good discussion. We have a motion from Ginny and a second from Brett on item number 10, transfer students for the 2018-19 school year. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Item number 11, approval of Judy Dittmeyer as the Argus School Board Liaison for the Argus Redevelopment Commission through the end of 2018. I move we approve uh, Judy Dittmeyer as our liaison to the Argus Redevelopment Commission through 2018. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? 
just a thanks to Judy should she be approved here because she wrote in her letter she's pretty busy and I see her at some of my other meetings so she's a good lady and I appreciate her adding to her table one more keeping on her table one more thing to do yes I had also discussed with her because she kind of wanted to get off there and then she realized all the upcoming changes to the town and she believes that she can do a better job than if we had somebody new in there. She knows what's going on and she has the school's best interest at hand to make sure we get all the things that we need. All those in favor of putting Miss Dittmeyer on the belt commission? Aye. 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 Four of that. Uh, item number 12. Lord, this is just informational. We had a bid opening today and we'll put it up here and I have a hard copy here for you. Um, we had a pre-bid meeting last week and we had uh, four contractors attend that and let us know they were going to bid. And we had two contractors pull out because they were in the uh, region and the region wages didn't put them in a competitive advantage for some more local companies. But we did receive two bids today. The two that pulled out was Gibson and Lewis. Uh, they're out of uh, Mishawaka and Larson Danielson out of Laporte. Uh, the two that did bid were Mill, Millwood Construction and Roofing. Uh, they're out of Bourbon and Milford. And Randy Yoder Construction out of Napanee. And they were using local con subcontractors. So, anyways, here. Here's a copy for each of you, and then <coughs> review it up here on the slides. Um, we just took the bids under advisement and asking you to take them under advisement for right now, but we'll give the numbers. And then I'd like to set a special board meeting for us to consider these bids. But the base bid, and this is the general contract, which has subcontractors like uh, plumbing and HVC and uh, electric underneath it and all of our parts that we've talked about several times are all under the base bid. Randy Yoder Construction, 673,200. Uh, Millwood Construction and Roofing, 537,855. And so that is uh, the base, uh, includes the restrooms here, all our security upgrades, uh, all the repairs to the outside of the building, um, and our that were listed and the to our masonry and all that so all that's in there and, uh, we will get a list of all the subs that are listed in each one of these as we go down the road here in the next week but then we built we bid altered up one and that's the commons area out here and reshaping condiments area giving us security view of the restroom areas and opening that up and remodeling the front of the library and the uh, ceiling areas here uh, for uh, Randy Yoder uh, construction 53,900 Millwood 36,415 if we chose to do that uh, alternate two would be the Y intersection restrooms to bring us up to uh, ADA code and uh, bring those restrooms up to code and that's 152,000 for Randy Yoder and Millwood 134,000. Next page. Alternate three would be our grades three to five restrooms. Um, 143,200, 123,000. Alternate four would be the high school lobby ceiling. Uh, grids, uh, putting new tile and grids in, um, 8,200 and 5,410 and then the question was asked about five megapixel cameras that would add uh, 7,300 or 6,200 to our base bid if we chose to do that all as I look at our funding and what we have available board we would have money available to do this it's just how much you choose to commit to this and at the next board meeting I will give you uh, details on that but at this time, and with Greg Drennan, our architect, we looked at it, we would be looking at uh, recommending to you the lowest bid. Uh, both, both organizations have worked with quite a few schools. Uh, Millwood is the low bidder. 
uh, in all situations, so we'd be looking at recommending them at this time. They have worked at uh, <coughs> Rochester schools, North Judson schools, Elkhart schools, uh, Valpo schools. Uh, they've had successful projects in quite a few school systems. Actually, both contractors have, but that's the one we're looking at. And we would be looking at the um, alternates that we'd have most interest in is alternates one, two, and three. That would get, be getting all of our restrooms done and doing our security, all our security, all our exterior repairs, and doing our remodeling on our main lobby out here to give us the vision we need and the look we need. And uh, <coughs> I will be sending this week to you the budget information on that, how that looks, and what it does to our reserves. But we do have the cash funding to do this as bid. So and Greg Drennan will be here at our special meeting to answer any questions. I also have all the subcontractors in these main bids. So that will all come. We just opened them today at 2, so it's just hot off the press. But I would recommend uh, giving you, so you have some time to review and we can send you more information, that we set up a special meeting for a week from the night, April 23rd. I'd like to schedule an executive uh, personnel meeting at 6 p.m. We have some personnel issues we need to talk about and then a regular meeting for just one item on the agenda to deal with our construction bids at 7 o'clock. So I make that recommendation board if you so choose to set that meeting. Uh, that would sort of bring us to the construction report up to date. everyone good with setting up meetings so we can set it up and advertise for it. Six o'clock for an executive of personnel and seven for a public meeting in this room to consider the construction bids. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, we'll set it. If you want to take action, you can or we'll just do it. Whatever you want to set. Okay. Uh, item 13, instructional report. I don't think I have anything this time. Item 13? Yes. Instructional report slides? Yes. You want to do the trans? We, we can take a look at this. This is state enrollment transfer. We'll go through it really quickly here. Um, this is looking at our surrounding school district, the number of kids that are coming into each district. Um, this year, 17, 18, transferring in. This can be for a lot of reasons. It can be for special ed. It can be all kinds. Or it can be true transfers in. Um, people coming from homeschooling, people coming from other situations. And you got to also consider the size of the district, but you can see the rankings up there on that. Um, we're sort of in the middle of the pack, and for a small district, that means we're above the middle of the pack because we have 106 students transferring into our district. And these are kids going out. And this out isn't really what's leaving us. It's, uh, we are sending kids out for vocational, we're sending kids out for special ed, you're sending kids out for other reasons. So uh, it, it's not just a true number who's choosing to transfer in, transfer in. It's out for any reason. And in small districts, we have to send kids out for services. So, But if you look at that, we're small in those numbers too. And if you look at some of the large numbers. So if you look at the net, that, that's something to look at. And you can see the district's really getting impacted negatively by this is Culver and North Judson. And really the only winner and not much of a winner is Plymouth. And actually Plymouth is way down from where they were a few years ago. They've actually lost a lot more than we have. 
from where they used to be. You have to look what the trends are. Our trend is very good. That number has really corrected itself in the last couple of years. So, but just interesting. Uh, what's the impact to the general fund since the state allowed transfers? Uh, there's our impact this year. You can see the impact to some other school districts. And when we're talking about this transfer and what it costs us, it costs educating our children. That's a lot of money. If you look at getting teachers' salary thirty some thousand, that's five teachers or five other, a lot of other employees. So all districts, but if you look at some districts, have really had to make a lot tougher decisions than we've had to make. But it is impacting people. And then just allowing vouchers, what does it cost? In every state, every school district, state of Indiana is impacted by vouchers. You can take your public money and put it into a private school. It can be a religious school or a private school. What's that costing? And that's impacting every school district. And you look where Plymouth really impacted big time with that. If you have a private school in your school district, they are now receiving state funding, those private schools, and do not have to follow state rules for eggs that we have to work on. So I have a hard time understanding that. But that's what our politicians have done. But I just thought it's important that we see there is a true impact to this, and it does impact our children and our community. And it's done in Indianapolis. So as you come to the primary and vote, you might want to ask people what they think about this. It's pretty important. Those are the people making these decisions for us. That's what I got on that. Thanks. I just thought that was pretty the first year first time the states released that information I can see why they didn't really want to release it that one slide showed 153,000 or yes. so impact to us now you said before that the the number of students in and number of students out was misleading because anyone who is coming in or going out for any specific purpose is included in that count but the 153 is a true reflection According to state, of the it's impact a, for those specific kids and the portion of the day that they're leaving or being here and that sort of thing? That's what the state is telling us. They're okay. called state data. So it's not a generalization. That's supposed to be a specific it's number. It's supposed to be a specific number. All right. And the 94,000 you have to add to that because that's just the voucher number. Right. Okay. So <coughs> you're over a quarter million just for us. And you're over a million for some of the districts around us per year. Okay. Item number 14, approval of donations. Uh, we have three donations to the BPA, uh, Health Realty, Fritz Abstract, and Van Atco Signs, totaling $170. Um, I'll accept a motion to approve those. So moved. Brett? Second. Second from Jim. Any discussion? I don't know if anyone knows. Is there a special project BPA is working on that these were given for? Or I know when the trip to Dallas. There's state trip. Okay. For those that qualified to go down the state. Okay. Nationals. 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 Does anyone know where that is? Texas. Dallas. Dallas. Friday, you can go get your pizza from the pizza place, and 20% of that purchase goes to the BP also. BPA. Did you have to get some sort of ticket or voucher or something that identifies that, or did they change that? No, all sales from that night and that day will go to BPA, 20% of the sales. Okay. Motion. Second. <laughs> Discussion after the discussion. And all those in <coughs> favor, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Uh, approval of claims. Good evening. Uh, I'm asking for approval of the claim docket for $519,042.69. That includes accounts payable and payable. Do I have a motion? 
I move we approve the claims as read. Claims as read. Discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Vote carries 4 0. Financial report. Informational. No vote. Needed. No. <laughs> uh, from general fund, there's our ending balances showing our expenditures getting balance revenue expenditures and any balance and debt service pension capital projects transportation I'm going to show you some slides on those we can see the balances at this time let's go to the slides and really we're hard to believe in 2018 we have 25 percent of it in the books so now these slides tend to mean something we're far enough down the year that they become more meaningful where we're at but here's showing our revenue for the last X number of years, and we hope that trend up this past year continues. Uh, general fund expenditures, 25% uh, of the years in the books, we have spent 24% of our general fund. So that looks real good, and we've reversed the trend that was a few years ago that is looking pretty healthy right now as we look at our budgets. On the general fund, capital projects uh, also looking healthy right now. I like that report is 25 percent end of the year and transportation I like all the way these graphs are heading right now you know they can change but when it's the right direction we do appreciate it so looking real healthy those three funds at this time and I say 25 percent of the year but hopefully that will continue but I'd say the financial condition of the district is good at this time for 2018 questions We'll move on to the item number 17, superintendent comments. That's a lot of comments. Superintendent Spike is done. Board comments. We'll start with Jenny. That's good. Done. Trey? Done. Kurt? I said more than enough tonight. I'm sure. Well, I guess I'll speak mine then. Um, as Brett mentioned earlier we have the manufacturing center that goes in that hopefully we'll bring some folks in that's a, that's a big dollar in risk but huge reward um, for those that don't know the town acquired uh, 12 lots they will be building on those those will all be new homes those will all be done by the end of 2019 with an option to purchase more property and put in more homes so um, those are not only things that help grow the town, but they're also things that can hugely impact the, the quality and quantity of kids that are coming to the area. So, as I spoke earlier, as Suzanne spoke earlier of, of everybody working together to kind of brand the town and, and sell what we're, get people to buy what we're selling, that's, that's everybody's very well invested in things right now um, the BPA kids going to nationals is huge good luck to them good luck to them in their um, financials to get there um, and that's all I have move to adjourn second and we will adjourn at 8 11 all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We still made it in eight of them.